Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make things. Today I'm going to show you how I made this awesome Hearthstone inspired tabletop diorama. There's a lot of parts to this build, so we'll start with the main piece first, the Hearthstone board itself. I printed out a copy of a board and then separated the pieces in Photoshop so that I can cut each piece out individually. I can then glue each cutout onto a thin piece of plastic card, which is durable enough that I don't need to worry about it breaking, but it's still easy enough to shape and cut. Once I've cut all the templates out, then I can just use CA glue to hold them in place. Any of the smaller trim pieces are a lot easier just to cut on the piece itself rather than try and measure them out ahead of time. As far as the small circles where the hero powers go, I tried making it out of the plastic card, but it was a bit too hard to cut perfect circles, so just using a bit of green stuff worked the best. There are still a lot of sharp edges that I want to soften, so I'll roll some more green stuff into a long strip then use my clay shaper to smooth it out. This will give it a cleaner transition from the board onto the deck. By using a ball stylus to outline everything, I can soften a few more of these edges as well as give a bit more texture. I'll roll out a big thick bit of green stuff which I'll then cut into four relatively equal amounts. I can apply it into all the corners of the board itself and then this is where we'll start to build our bricks up. You can smooth it out with your finger to begin with, and then come back in with the shaper to sharpen up some of the edges and really refine the shape. Once that's done, I'll use the sharp edge of my bladed shaper, I don't know what you'd call it, it's a bit of a, a sharp pointed shaper, and then that'll let me cut some grooves into it. Then I can come back through with my flat spoon tool and add the rest of the brick shape. I wanted to raise the board off the table that it'll be built on a little bit, so I'm going to take a thick piece of clay and actually double it up so that I can build almost a stone base or a plinth, which I'll then glue the board onto. Believe it or not, plastic doesn't do well in the oven, so you need to take that off before you cure the base. Because Hearthstone is a computer card game, you'll only ever see the board from one direction. This means that when I use the in-game references, my board doesn't make any sense in a 3D setting. As a result, I've had to cut off one of the hero shields and spin it around. It also means that I'm going to need to refine the shape of the deck since that hero shield overhangs now. It's an easy enough fix with a little more green stuff, and once it's primed and painted, you won't even notice. I want to give this table a lived-in feel. I want it to look like they've walked away from a game either after it's just finished or just before it's begun. To do this, I need to add a couple things onto the table itself. The first of these is going to be a beer stein. So to do that, I'll roll out some clay, flatten it, and then cut a strip which I can then attach onto a piece of dowel. Dowel and wood are perfect for shaping your clay because the porous nature means that the clay, once it's cured, doesn't actually stick to the surface, so you can slide it off and manipulate it as you need to. It's worth mentioning at this point that this isn't the actual stein I end up using, just because when I came to painting it, it just looked awful. The paint I used was really cheap and it had horrible streaks in it, so I ended up scrapping the whole thing and just remaking it out of uh, just brown and gray clay. I thought it'd be kind of fun to have a dagger like halfway embedded into the table like you might see in, you know, a shitty fantasy movie or something like the World of Warcraft. So to do that, I made the cross guard and the blade itself just out of some more aluminium wire. Uh, and then I'll roll some really thin strips of clay, which I can then press onto both sides. This gives it a nice flat, sharp feeling and then a weird semi phallic thing up the top of it and then it's basically done. To make the handle itself, I've just super glued a tiny bit of uh, like floral wire onto it, and then I'll wrap it around the outside like you'd wrap any handle, really. The trick here is to keep it nice and tight and press it down. Then you can harden it in place with a little bit more CA glue at the top, and a little bit of green stuff to make the pommel itself. Again, I apologize, I've ended up making something phallic. I swear it's not on purpose, it just happens to work out that way. What is a fantasy tavern without some very melted candles as well? So to make ours, we're going to roll a single tube of the clay, cut it down into three equal size, and then use a bit more of the floral wire to add wick into the middle of each of them. 
I'll then come back through with my trusted ball stylus. Uh, and then you can just start pressing it around in the center. If you squish it down, you can drag it, which adds to that sort of melted effect. Very easy and very satisfying. Now, I had a lot of options as far as making the table. You could absolutely 100% make this out of cardboard. You could make it out of clay. You could make it out of plastic card, foam, whatever you wanted. Um, I happen to have a bunch of sheets of solid walnut lying about, and I thought, hey, why not go way the hell overboard? So once I've measured the top and the sides to make sure that they are an appropriate width and length, I can start making the rest of the table. The first thing I need to make is the apron, which is the bit around the bottom that the legs attach to, and in theory would keep the board or keep the tabletop from actually flexing or bowing. That won't really be an issue for a seven inch long table though. Once I've cut everything out with the saw, I'll take it all over to my shooting plane, which gives me a lot more control over how thick and straight each piece is. It might be a tiny table for a desktop diorama, but damn it, it's gonna be the finest table I've ever built. I don't want the table to look like a single solid piece of wood, so what I'm gonna do is mark out some lines using my marking knife, and then I'll bring the V-groove through and refine those edges. This will really make it look like a couple different boards are glued together, rather than one solid piece. Any self-respecting woodworker puts breadboard ends on his table. On a larger scale, these help hide the end grain that you get on the ends of your wood, and they also add a bit more rigidity and prevent flexion or bowing in the tabletop. Throughout the whole process of making this, I want to make sure that I keep checking the size so that everything fits well. I don't want to get to the end of having built all this and realize that it's either way too small or way too big. Here you can see where I've already added the apron onto it. This will give me a place to glue the table legs on because you don't want to be gluing end grain directly onto face grain. It's not going to hold very well and I want to make sure that this table will last a lifetime. That being said, it's now time to really go through and mark the whole thing up. This is a well-used table in a tavern. It's going to have nicks, it's going to have scratches, it's going to have gouges out of it. So I'll take various little tools I have, knives, shapers, sandpaper and just really start to ruin what I just spent hours lovingly crafting. Now to really make this thing come alive, I'm gonna to need to throw a whole lot of cards onto it. You could, if you were a masochist, spend a lot of time making your own, but I find it's just as easy to print a couple out from online and then cut them out. Don't be an idiot like me and try to individually cut them out like this. It took me an entire row before I realized that the scissors make short work of this. One last thing we need to do with the cards is make a little card pack. So I'll glue about four of them thick together just using a Pritt stick. And then with one last card, I'll glue it onto the back so that there's no obvious white showing. I want to use some clay to make a runner that will go across the length of the table. The problem is that in order to bake the clay hanging over the edges, I need to bake it on the table. I don't want to put the table in the oven because I'm worried about it warping, cracking, or splitting. So my idea is to remake the tabletop out of something that I can put in the oven, and then I can measure out what I need to and drape it over the side. To make the runner itself, I've cut a very thin strip of clay, which I can then shape and basically get sort of a fabric look to it. This turned out beautifully, but the problem again here is that I used cheap paint and it just looked awful once it actually came to its finished form. So a little down the line, I'll scrap this whole thing and just use blue and gold clay instead. Now we need to make the tiny buildings that go on the game board itself. In my first iteration, I did try making them entirely out of gray Super Sculpey and then going over any of the fine details in just some green stuff and decided I kind of hated it. It looked like I was trying to make it too real. 
the idea with Hearthstone is that it's a card game. It's based off of the World of Warcraft, and the World of Warcraft is like a 15-year-old game with questionable uh, graphics. What redeems it is the fact that it has phenomenal art style. I just adore the art style in the game itself. So I wanted to try and capture that as best I could by making this a bit more cartoony and a little less lifelike, if you will. To that end, I found that using just some Fimo colored clay worked out really well. This is the first of the buildings that I made, which was the tavern. Um, you could see it's a wooden building, which works well with that brown. Um, bright yellow lights on the indoors, and then I've made a tiny little sign on the side, which I'll attach using just a little bit of wire and glue. The top shingles are made out of more of the blue, which cut into strips and then slapped on top. Now, it's not nearly as sharp as you could do with something a little bit stiffer, like the Super Sculpey, but I still think it turned out really nicely. Once you go through, refine some of the edges, it looks great. It looks like pieces on a game board. I didn't want it to look perfect. I mean, I couldn't make it look perfect, but I also didn't want to. The tower is by far the easiest of the buildings to make, which means it was probably my favorite. It's a circle with a cylinder and then a circle. And then you add a couple of squares on top to make your turrets, then cut out some small rectangles and stick them onto the side to make it look like it's made out of brick. You can absolutely carve the bricks in if you want, it's fairly easy to do, but I actually kind of prefer the look of these bricks sticking onto it. It adds to that sort of cartoon vibe. The last touches on the tower are a brown door, some yellow with some line cut into it to make the bale of hay, and then a brown tube and a square brown box, which will make our barrel and our crate. Then we're on to what is either a clock tower or a barracks, and this again is made mostly out of the grey Sculpey, but there's a few more highlights that come in in different colours. You probably notice here, but none of these buildings are actually square. They all have a bit of a taper from the top down, and this gives it, again, more of a cartoon feel, but it also gives it a bit of depth, um, sort of the, the illusion of height. Beside the clock tower, or barracks, or whatever it is we're calling this thing, there's a tiny well. Again, pretty easy, just think of the turret without the top. So you make a circle, then you make a cylinder, you poke it in the middle, and you've now got a well. For the peaks on the tower, I'm just going to cut some square cubes out of the blue uh, clay, and then I'll shape them using my fingers into semi-pyramidal shapes. Then a little bit more over top of the side to cover in the gaps, and then I'll take the scalpel and just cut in some grooves for simulated tiles. The last bit is a little bit of the brown in the middle of it, which will allow me to give it sort of a wooden texture. I'll then take the scalpel through and cut some grooves into it or some slats to give it that wooden look. Finally, we're going to add some more of the little bricks onto it to make it a brick structure, and it's done. To add water to the well, we'll take a tiny bit of blue clay and just press that down. So I've cut out a couple of small golden circles which will act as coins, and then to make the lantern beside the cathedral, a small gold square, and then I'll bring through some grey Sculpey, which I'll then cut into relatively equal sized cubes. And then shaping them with my fingers, I'll make them into a dome. This will act as the top and the bottom, and then I'll make a third one eventually to attach it to the base. The cathedral is basically the same shape as the barracks, so it's going to be a cube, and then I'll get a couple different layers of the base. First one will be a little bit bigger, second one's a little bit smaller, which will give me, like, the, the stepped-up look. And then I'll use a couple different tools just to keep them square to each other. Then that cube goes into the middle of it, I will reshape it to make sure the top is flat. And for the pillars on the side, they're just long rectangular pieces, but because I want them to be inset a tiny bit, I'll cut the squares out of the cube and then I can slot them in. For the rooftop, I'll take a thick piece of clay and then cut out the shape of a four-sided triangle and then put that directly into the middle, leaving enough space on both sides for some yellow clay which I will cut into smaller triangles which will then just fit into the actual slots between. Once I've got four of these in place, I can start to tamp them down, connect all four sides, but I'll leave a little gap so that I can put some spacers in. 
Each of the pillars is going to have its own little turret on top, so I want to make sure that I've got enough space to put a little square cut in it. Then I'll cut the top off so it's flat, and I can put a tiny cube in the middle of it, which will be the tower of the cathedral itself. Each of the towers is going to get its own little rooftop, which are then connected to the central tower using little gray spacers. The last major component will be the golden roof on top of the cathedral, which will just be cut out of another square block of gold clay and then slapped right on top. The windows at the front of the cathedral will be made out of blue clay, so we'll cut a couple of small triangles and then gingerly apply them on using one of my shaping tools. They look a bit janky to start with, but we can go back through with the shapers to give them a more windowy feel to it, and then you can cut off any remaining clay just using your scalpel. One of the finishing touches will be adding the steps up to the front, which are just four square blocks of clay stacked on top of each other, and then a circular piece of clay right in the middle will form our door. And it is essentially done at this point. With our beer done, we need to make the rest of the food. So the first one will be our cheese wedge, which is a round piece of the gold clay pressed down and then with the ball stylus come through and give it the standard Swiss cheese style holes in it. The loaf of bread will just be a brown chunk of clay that I'll slap down and then use the ruler to cut the standard uh, bread shape into it. And then I want to have it with a bite out of it, so I'll use my scalpel to cut out a bit, and then use the same thing that I made the coins with to take some obvious bite marks out of it. Finally, we'll go back through with a stiff brush to give it a bready, wheaty appearance, and give it a bit of texture. To make it easier to connect all the parts of the lamp post and to add the actual post itself, I'll poke a couple holes into the clay just before I bake it. This will give me somewhere to glue it all. Then once it's baked, I can start assembling it. So a little bit of super glue into the bottom, I'll put the wire in and then let that harden, cut it off to length, and then I can start to add the extra pieces. So I'll put the first bit on, let it dry, put the second lamp center, and then I will add the top onto it. And that's your lamp essentially done. All we need to do is paint it up so it's got the right color on it, but the shape is perfect. A little tip for you, if you get super glue stuck to your finger, super glue will rip if you lift straight off, but it's got really poor shearing strength. So you can usually just twist it off and it will come off without breaking what you're using. This is my second take on the runner for the center of the table. You can see I use the blue clay, which looks a lot nicer. And then I want the gold trim, which is super finicky to do with this stuff. But basically, I just cut out a nice long strip, lay it all the way around. And then once it's sort of in the position I want, I can take my ruler as well as a scalpel and start to finesse all the edges. The shield underneath is going to be made out of a large piece of the brown clay, which I will add a strip of gray sculpey around the edge. This will be sort of the iron banding around it. Then it's just a case of rolling it flat so that it all sticks together. With the scalpel and one of the clay shapers, I'll cut some lines into it to give it a sort of wooden appearance. And then I can start working on the emblem for the center. I've printed out a piece which should fit in the center for sort of the horde shield. I'll cut it out of a thin, flat piece of Sculpey, and then I can just slop it right into the middle of the shield itself. Once I've attached the center bit, I can go around with a scalpel and sharpen up a lot of the edges. With the emblem done, all I need to do are add a couple of rivets onto the shield. These will just be some small circles, which I can evenly space around the outside of the iron banding. To finish the shield, we'll add a little bit of a weathering into it. What I'm going to do is take my scalpel and cut out various chunks here and there. I'll cut out a bit around the edges and then I'll go back across and remove little bits of the emblem to really give it a well-used and worn look. I figure one of the most iconic things for the Alliance side of the table would be the Stormwind Guard Helmet. In order to make this, I'll squish a dome-shaped bit of Sculpey onto the end of a dowel and then cut it flat around the edge. A squared piece of flat Sculpey cut on both sides around the edge will provide the face guard. It's easy enough to put it on and then blend all the seams so that it's one solid piece. Then once I've blended it all in, I'll find the general center and start to cut the visor out of it. 
With the face guard cut out, I can start to get the actual shape. So with the center found again on the back of it, I'll lay out my general guidelines using my ruler, and then with the scalpel, I'll cut it all out. After I've baked the helmet once to cure the shape, I can add the gold trim around the bottom and then up the visor. For the plume on top, there's a small bit of metal that runs down the center, which I'll just cut and apply using liquid Sculpey. And then a cylinder just glued onto the top, which is where the plume will get stuck. I've added a few rivets above the visor, and then I'm ready to add the plume. This will be a simple piece of blue clay, which I can give some depth to using my sculpting tools. Once it's baked the last time, I can take it off of the dowel and it's finished. And I have to say I am absolutely chuffed to bits with how this helmet turned out. Then we're on to what is probably the most important part, but one of my least favorite parts, which is the painting of everything. For the board itself, I'm going to use a little bone white to give it a sort of papery texture. And then for the bricks, I've just mixed a little brown and a little bone white to give it a darker brown cobblestone color. For the top part of the board, I will use a nice thick red for the horde side. This is in spite of me hating doing the painting when it really starts to come together. The bottom half, again, will be a nice dark blue. It went on a little bit darker than I'd intended, but I'll go back through afterwards and I'll lighten it up a little bit, give it a little bit less of a sharpness to it. Can paint be sharp? And then the edges, because it's going to be sort of a stone color, we'll go through and coat the entire thing in a nice dark gray. Taking a bit of extra care at this point to make sure that I'm not throwing paint everywhere. I've got all my base colors down, so I want to be a little conscious of where I'm starting to paint things. With the gray added on, we can start to highlight some of the extra parts with a bit of a darker brown. So the hero power area with a nice brown, and then I'll go through the edges of the cobblestone as well. Trying to cover up any of the leftover little bits of gray, and then with the last little bit left on my brush, I'll highlight a couple bricks to just make the cobblestone a little bit more realistic. Here I'm going through with the lighter blue, just to soften up the darkness of that uh, Alliance blue. And then I'll just dry brush all the bricks with a lighter bone white. So I want to highlight the stone a bit more, so I'll go back through with a lighter gray and just go around the outside of basically all the stone parts. It's a very simple thing to do, but I think it really highlights it all and makes it stand out a lot better. Then the last of the major painting is to add the golden trim to the hero deck as well as around the hero shield and the power itself. It's at this point that I'm really starting to like the look of the board. I'm starting to become a lot more happy with it. Anytime I start painting, I get super frustrated super fast because it never looks like it does in my mind's eye. Once I start to add these little things on or do any of the dry brushing at the end, that's when I start to feel really good about everything. I want to weather the board a little bit more, so I've added a little bit of wash onto it, and then I'll take a nice dark brown wash and highlight all of the bricks. Finally, this is my last chance to really fix up any of the issues with the buildings. So I noticed that the tavern should have gray brick around the bottom, which I can just paint on. And then the lamppost needs to be black as well as have a couple of the edges filled in. I'll also take this chance to finish painting the dagger. And then I will add a couple highlights onto the wooden platter. I also want to go over the bread with a bit more color, so that same light beigey brown, fill in all the spots, and then do a dry brush over the entire outside. I wanted to add some foam to the beer stein, so I'll take a cotton ball and cover it in Mod Podge. Once it dries, it'll end up looking like foam is pouring out over the side. Now we're finally ready to assemble all the pieces. I hummed and hawed over making a base and decided to make a wooden floor using the same technique I used to make the tabletop. Again, I could have just made it out of cardboard or MDF, but I had the walnut lying around, and why not go over the top? Once I've added the runner and the board, I can start attaching the actual buildings onto it. I made a couple tiny blue diamonds out of blue clay, which will act as the turn mana points. And I cut the deck of cards that I've made in the previous section in half, and then glued them on so that it looks like they're coming out of the board. And then a little bit of green clay will act as the turn button. 
And then at this point, it's just a case of putting all the pieces down where I think they're going to look best. And that's it, that's it finished. This is definitely the longest build I've ever done and probably the one I am absolutely the most proud of. I love all the little details. I love how it all turned out. I like that it's still got a very cartoony feel to it while still maintaining a semi-realistic tavern look. If you liked the video, leave me a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Doing so lets me know that you want to see more of these in the future. And until next time, we'll see you later. Cheers!